Hello, Blackman High students. We have a special a conversation with program for you today with a former Blackman High student, 2017 graduate, Heather Edelstein. She was in Key Club, valedictorian, and she was with National Honor Society, which is how I got to know her. But there's another story here. So I'd like to welcome Heather Edelstein. Everyone say hi. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, Heather, well, let's get to kind of the meat of our conversation here. Um, Heather, you were here at Blackman High School, but you've been on a, a journey during yes. that time. Tell us about that. Yes. So I, after I graduated, I went to UT Knoxville and I left school after that first year because I got sick with an eating disorder. And I had to go home and I had to go into treatment. Um, how, I guess, the best way to start it is probably in high school. Um, right when I went into my freshman year, I knew, I was like, I am going to be a valedictorian. My older sister, who had graduated that the year before I went to high school, was a valedictorian. Um, and I just knew I wanted that so badly. So all four years, I spent a lot of time on studying and um, making those A's and keeping that 4.0, that number, that 4.0 was such a, always like present in my mind. And there were some warning signs of, my eating disorder there um, that had I known more or had my parents known more? Because the thing is not a lot of people are very aware of eating disorders, especially as complex as they really are. And so things that were abnormal, skipping meals, um, you know, like I had to finish my homework before I could have a meal or anything, things that were not normal that should have been picked up on. Um, but then I went to college and they always say like, it's a very, you know, like college is such this experience. It's such the best four years of your life. And it's just this amazing thing. And I went and I, I, I don't know if I just wasn't as ready for that transition but it became very hard for me living um, away from my family. And even though I had friends there, they were more on the college as a party. And I was on the, it was, if I was a valedictorian in high school, wouldn't it be cool if I was a valedictorian in college? And so that year that I was there, if I was not studying, I was in the gym, um, I became very obsessed with things I ate, how much I exercised, um, and that is where I really became sick um, because you start restricting a little bit and then you restrict more and then you're exercising and it just became a lot. And with that, you obviously lose a lot of energy, you're very weak, um, and I, like, walking to class was, like, a chore, and this is Knoxville, there are hills, there are lots of stairs, and so I came home, um, and my mom noticed that something was not, I'd already decided, I was like, I want to transfer to MTSU, I don't want to be in Knoxville. So that decision was already made. So I came home and my mom just started watching um, that whole summer. But I kept getting sicker and sicker. Um, because when you have anorexia, you are very, or any eating disorder, you are very good at hiding it. And so I made sure that if I ate, my mom saw it. 
Um, but as it goes on, this illness just takes over and there just became lots of rules. You can only eat these two things and you can only eat in these, two, in this, these hours of the day. Um, so I just kept becoming increasingly sicker and my mom's doing all the research. She, you know, Googling like crazy, talking to people in the medical field, everything. And then one day she's just like, Hey, I made your doctor's appointment. And I, I got nervous, but I was like, okay. So we went, I'm sitting there and the doctor comes in. He, you know, asks the regular questions and he was like, so, you know, like what, what brings you in? My mom goes, I think he's anorexic. And I got mad because that word had never been used ever. That and even doing this, you don't, it's not a conscious choice of like, yes, I'm not going to eat. It just becomes all these rules. And like in it, you don't think like, I have an eating disorder. You don't think that at all. You think what you're doing is normal. And so I was like, what? <laughs> no. And, but anyway, long story short, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder. Um, I did not get a treatment right away. My mom, again, people don't know a lot about eating disorders and what should have happened was I should have been sent right then to treatment. But my mom was scared. Um, I was at a very, very low weight and she was scared. So she was like, we're going to do this at home. I'm going to feed you. And I was like, huh, that's funny. And so she made me quit work. Um, I couldn't go to school. Um, I had, it was, she was very much like, we are focusing on your health. And I did do well with her because I love my mom and she worked so hard and she put me in therapy. She got me a dietitian, all the things, but with eating disorders come a lot of medical problems. And so, I mean, blood work every week all kinds of things, checking heart, kidneys, osteoporosis, like all the things you don't know you're doing to your body. And she's wanting me to take it seriously. And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Like, that's not a thing. So as we go on, it just becomes, I am not gaining weight. I'm not getting better mentally. I'm still sick. And so that's when she decided to send me to treatment. And I went to the Renfrew treatment center in Brentwood and I was there for seven months and um obviously I hated it at first but now I love that place I love those therapists um I actually sometimes every because it people change in and out depending you know you're in this program then this program so like the groups are constantly changing and so I will go speak there sometimes they have like a family group um, every Thursday. And so they will have me come share my story. And then the patients or their parents can ask questions. Um, so that is really great. Um, I've done it alone. I've done it with my mom. And I'm about to do one with my boyfriend who had to learn a lot very quickly on how to help. Um, but is it something, something are you ever cured or yeah, it... I 100% think full recovery is possible um I wouldn't say I am fully recovered I still have bad days but I would say I am very 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 close I can go throughout my day I can work I can choose on bad days to eat even though it's hard so yes, I believe that full recovery is very possible. How, if you look back, how old were you when you, you can look back and see this problem started in, at this grade or this age? What's the earliest that you know you had a um, problem? 15. I remember the first time I sat at lunch and was like, you know, I really need to finish this homework first. I don't need to eat. And it, it just grew from there of the rules and the just of like obsession over being perfect. That's that comes in a lot is I had to 
no homework. That all had to be done. If it wasn't done, I wasn't perfect. And if it wasn't done great, I wasn't perfect. So perfection comes up a lot. Did your friends know? Um, I think some of them suspected, but no one ever mentioned it to me. Um, which looking back, especially my college roommate, um, bothers me a little bit because they'll say like, oh, we knew you were sick the whole time. But so some definitely suspected. Um, only one of my friends ever went to my mom. Um, she, she said something to my mom. Is there something that teachers or students at schools could do better at um, helping students with this? Right. So I, you know, I know Blackman was a great school. I loved all my teachers. They were amazing. Um, if anything could be done better, I think is noticing. It's not normal to skip lunch. It's not normal to have a class party and not eat anything. Um, those are the times something should be asked. Um, I, I was in theater. I did theater all four years, um, like theater class. And then I was stage managing the plays. Um, and Miss Febles, the theater teacher at the time, um, it was my senior year. And we would do, like after we had like a big project, we would do like a class party and I never ate. And one time she mentioned it to me because I was very close with Miss Febles. I actually still talk to her. Um, um, and she pulled me aside and like asked. And of course I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm just not hungry. But I think she always kept a close eye on it. Uh, but I think noticing because it's never normal to n skip lunch. If there is a student that's out here right now and they have an eating disorder to this very day right now, what what would you like to say to them for those that you have been through this and they're feeling like maybe I don't, maybe I didn't know I had this problem, but there is a name for it. What would you tell them right now? Um, so I know a big thing that comes up is the thought I'm not sick enough like oh well sure maybe I skip lunch but I eat breakfast or I eat dinner and very important is to know that any form of it is sick enough there is no I am not small enough to have an eating disorder that's not true you can have an eating disorder at any size and it it can bring a lot of shame because you can feel like well I'm not doing it well um comes up a lot and my favorite analogy is what if it was cancer what if you had cancer would you be ashamed to go get treatment or to get help would you be ashamed of that um no and I also like this I I actually kept this written up on my mirror for the whole time I was in treatment was would you treat your five-year-old self like this if your five-year-old self was like I am too fat or I am not good enough or anything. Would you tell her, oh, well, then you can't eat lunch? No, you would tell her that's not true and you're beautiful no matter what. And I just really love that because that five-year-old self is still in you and um, to nurture that. And I think about it with Nanny. Like, would I ever tell this little girl, like, you don't can't have a snack like no I would never do that so why would you do it to yourself and I think there is no shame at all in just saying like I need help and there there is it's a very real thing of like a mental health stigma um but going to therapy is one of the great greatest parts of my week um just because it's, it's your own time and you can talk about whatever you want and getting help was hard and I struggled a lot with it. I struggled taking medication. I thought that that was weak and I was ashamed of it. But again, what if it was cancer? Would you not take chemo? No, of course you would. So I very much just look into that part and just 
talk back to it and don't be afraid to tell someone. It's not a shameful thing at all. What's the first step for someone if they are um, coming to the realization of what should they do first? Um, first, uh, as a high school student, I would probably say talk to your parents. If that is not something you could do, um, I would talk to the counselors at school. I had a very great one when I was at Blackman. Um, they, it can seem like you don't have the time or the opportunity or like, well, we just talked about school. But no, like they are there and they are hired for a very good reason. The school counselors are very great um, and they know what to do. Um, there are places that will do free therapy. Um, I know there are some um, like nonprofit organizations that will offer some um, and churches do it. So I would look into talking you like talking to somebody keeping it in is very 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 hard this is an incredible journey and you may not want to hear this but heroic i'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and say it um and you're a fantastic student and when you were here and with us at blackman high and then national honor society and and you just never know you just mm -hmm. never know what someone's going through and and the battle Everyone's always going through a battle in some way. So, um, gosh, thank you so much for your visit here. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, just, um, you know, whether it's an eating disorder you're struggling with or depression, anxiety, um, it's all valid. And it, there's not a time where you ever don't deserve to get help. And it's never too early and it's never too late. It's an imperfect journey. An imperfect journey. That's the perfect way to call it. Well, Blackman High School students, this is, these are the steps that you're walking in. One of the Blackman High alumni, Heather Edelstein, class of 2017, and she's got a story to tell and she told it and please take it to heart. So um, thank you so much, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.